I was trimming air with uh, UGXMods.com, continuing my basic mapping tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to cover how to make prefabs, manage prefabs, place prefabs, stamp prefabs, um, placing models, and playable area. And I'll go over what all of that means as I go. So let's start with some prefabs. Prefabs are basically little map files um, that you place within your map files to store. Let's see what would be the best way to explain this. It's basically you could create a new map in Radiant, draw, build a house, save it as a map, and then open your other map and import it as a prefab and basically what that does is it brings that house you made into your current map but it's not editable and if you were to go into your prefab of the house and edit the house you would see the changes reflected in your map so it's like linking it's not like a copy and paste it's like linking the file to your map so that you can update it separately but have it in your map and then if you want to make changes to the house that you don't want to save to the prefab, you'd want to stamp it, which we'll go over. So first, let's try opening a prefab and bringing it in. So to assuming you already have a prefab, the mod tools come with a few. Uh, let's go ahead and place one. So you go ahead and right click, and you go to misc prefab. Let's get that out of the way. And then you want to go you want to make sure you're in your cod root and then go into map source and then prefabs and zombie mode what do we got here um nothing that exciting i don't know if you guys have these prefabs or not but they come with the sniper bolt scripts um Let's see, I'm looking for something exciting. So far I haven't found anything. Um, <laughs> here, houses, rural. Uh, let's go with zombie asylum, vista house, one. Okay, so I placed it and you can already see it here and here it is. You can move it around. See, it's just kind of an ugly house. I don't even know why they bothered including it. It's a piece of shit. There's no interior. It's all cock texture, which means it's un it's unrendered on the inside. Um, so this would basically be a house you'd put on the edge of your map just for scenery purposes. Um, so it's a prefab. So I can't edit it. I can only move it around or delete it. And if I were to open this prefab up, you, I'd see the changes in this map on this house. So let's say I do want to edit this house. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it. And the stamp button is on your toolbar. It looks like a little stamp. It's right next to the P of the MVP. And it says stamp prefabs. Explode selected prefab to brushes in the map. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. All right. And you'll notice it's still all selected, but if I hit escape, I can now select each part of the house. So I can go ahead and edit it however I want. I can delete the windows. I can resize any part of it that I want. But I'm not editing the original house. This is part of my map now. If I wanted, I could replace the house and it would be just like it was before I edited it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that now. Okay, so placing models. Um, to place a model, you want to right click in your 2D view and you want to go to MISC model. And I just want to get this, I just want to say this now. You may not understand this and if you don't, don't pay attention to it, but I'm just going to say it. If your model is, is going to be controlled by script, like if it's, if you're going to use it as a door, for to like if you're going to use a, a a model as a door instead of making a brush model door 
and you're going to want it to disappear when you trigger it like a zombie debris door you want to make sure it's a script model because MISC models cannot be controlled by script so once again cod root go into raw x model um, and then you gotta pick one I'm gonna go ahead and put in static STA um, and find let's see these awnings are good. I'm gonna then I click open. Okay, and there's my model. So I'm going to go ahead and move it over here. Turn it around. Move it down. Okay. Um, it's a little big, <laughs> uh, scale wise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do this does not work on script models by the way what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the awning and press N which brings up this entity window I'm going to put key model scale and then the value is a multiplier with one being the original size anything smaller than one being smaller than the original size and anything bigger being bigger than the original size so I'm going to put in two so now it's twice as big as it was before. And if I put in 1, it's now back to the same size. If I put in 0 0.5, it's now half the size it was. And it's a much more appropriate size now. So I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the window over here. Okay, that's that's pretty good. It's not quite centered, so I'm gonna make my grid smaller and center it. There we go. So now our window has an awning. Let me go ahead and hide that so you can see it better. You hide objects by selecting them and pressing H and you show hidden objects by doing shift H. So there's a there's a model. That's how you place a model. Okay, and then lastly uh, is playable area. And playable area is basically a giant trigger or triggers. You can use more than one. Um, that tell the game where what part of your map is actually playable area. And by playable area I mean area where players are going to be and there's going to be action it's basically any accessible area um, zombie spawns zombie spawning areas are not playable area background scenery that you can't access is not playable area and the purpose of this is so that the script knows where to spawn power-ups um, if you don't provide a playable area then power-ups can spawn wherever a zombie dies which could mean that a power-up spawns somewhere where your player can't get to so to create this trigger you're going to want to draw a brush just like you normally would and you're going to want to cover as much playable area as you can with each brush you make but it's okay if you can't cover all of it with one because you can make as many as you want so there we go I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to trigger multiple okay and then I'm going to hit N and give it target name playable underscore area enter okay so I'm covering most of my map but I'm not covering these sides so let's go ahead and make a new trigger don't overlap your triggers by the way and give it the same target name whoops shit I just made a common mistake I didn't make it um, a brush model or a trigger before I gave it a target name so what I just ended up doing was giving my world spawn a target name which will probably crash your map so if your map is crashing and you don't know why unselect everything in your map and then p press N and you'll bring up the world spawn entity 
and go ahead and delete that key from there. It's a common mistake because it looks like a trigger, but it's not going to be a trigger until you do this. Right now, right, right then, it was just a textured box. It's not going to help you much. Okay, so that I covered that spot. Now, let's cover the other spot. Make it a trigger multiple. Give it the target name. Okay, so we just made a playable area for this whole house. Um, now all the um, all the power-ups will be able to spawn in here. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over risers and probably a few other good things. Uh, but risers is the main thing I'm going to go over in the next video. So look look uh, look for that coming out probably right after this one. Thanks, guys.